ArcGIS Online is the mapping platform for your organization. But you guys already know that. You are building so many great maps and apps. Let's take a look at a few of them. Here's a campus map from Texas A&M. Shows uh, pertinent information about the, about the campus, along with great pictures, easy search. Uh, here's an app from the Dubai Electricity and Water Company Authority, where they uh, encourage you to put solar panels and show you what that might uh, offer you as a citizen. Or this geology map of Britain, which reveals uh, the surface geology, but also, as you explore it more, uh, reveals the complex patterns that are going on below the surface. To this uh, operations dashboard application from the city of Tempe about opioid abuse probable EMS calls, these dashboards invite you to filter and see exactly what's going on uh, in your area. Over the last few years, we've been building out the JavaScript API and the online mapping experience to help you easily turn your data into actionable geographic information. As the browsers have grown in capabilities, like WebGL, we've increased the performance of the API so that you can deliver more information to your users as fast as possible. Over the next 40 minutes, we're excited to show you what's coming up over the next month in the area of web mapping and the JavaScript API. So let's get started. Here's a map highlighting the percentage of adults who have a high school education. As I zoom in, Different levels of geography expose themselves. I have counties all the way down uh, to census tracts. If we go to another area that has a lot of census tracts drawn, we see I get good performance, and it feels like raster tiles. Uh, but this is not raster tiles. This is feature data uh, that is delivered from your hosted feature layers with dynamic feature tiles. These feature tiles are brought to the browser and then displayed in WebGL. This map is telling one story, but since I have access to the features, I can tell a different story. Let's go in and modify what we're looking at. This display is actually built with an Arcade expression. Arcade is a scripting platform language, uh, is a scripting language for the platform. Everything happens on the client side. If I, oops, didn't copy the right uh, thing here. If I change this slightly to show uh, the, the percentage of people who never went to high school or who never finished high school, we'll get a different visualization. I see that information drawn with the counts and amounts style. And as I access the data, I have control over how I want to look. Maybe I want to look at it to the national average, which is 20%, all the way up to 50%. Notice the smooth interaction as I move the slider up and down. Because this is drawn in WebGL, we can create very fast user experiences. With smart mapping, I can explore different patterns. Maybe I want to look at all of the educational attainment attributes. Um, with all of these variables, smart mapping will kick in, and it'll suggest a style like the predominant category or the predominant category in size. This shows me where um, uh, people are most likely to live based on their educational uh, attainment. With a little bit more fine tuning, I can tweak this um, using color schemes that are specifically designed for this predominant category visualization. That applies not just here, uh, but everywhere in the map. In addition to fast display and easy to use smart mapping, your platform is working hard to make it even easier to update your data. Uh, last year on the plenary, I did a demo with the Zillow data. I downloaded data from the Zillow website, I think it was like October 2016, and I joined that with the Living Atlas zip code layers. Uh, from that data layer, I created some uh, hosted views. I created uh, two view layers with different visualizations, the peak month and the price estimate. Now, these views only show where I actually have Zillow data. So let's look at a few of these. So the size of the circle is equal to the Zillow estimate by zip code, and the color in indicates the percent change from the previous year. If I go to LA, since it's a lot more expensive to buy a house in LA, these circles are quite a bit larger. But if I look at the other uh, 
other layer, I see the uh, peak uh, housing peak month. So if it's yellow, the current price is less than it was before. And if it's green, it's the highest price it was ever recorded. And we can see this across the US. Now, how do I update that data? So I can go back to the Zillow website, download the latest information. And this spreadsheet has the zip code, its current price, the peak month date, and the last time at peak month date. I can go here and update this data. I'm going to pin that CSV to that uh, parent hosted layer. So I'm uploading the data to online. It'll unpack it, analyze the data, and then find the, in the information that's pertinent to my hosted layer. So from here, I can select uh, the area that I want to match to. So I'm going to match to my zip code field with the zip code field in the CSV. And I'm going to match all the other fields. In this case, it found automatically the fields that match with the parent layer. I'll apply those updates. I'm doing that with this simple user experience, but I could just as easily use the Python API to update the data programmatically. All right, my, my data has been updated. Let's go back to the map. Notice this zip code here. This represents uh, Bonner Springs, uh, Kansas, and it's uh, in yellow. It's less than the highest price ever. Let's uh, reload, reload the data and see how the data's changed. Now that's moved to green. And notice all these other zip codes that now have data in Zillow that now light up. I hope these three demos show you the power of WebGL when working with your features, how easy it is to use smart mapping to turn your data into actionable information, and the built-in capabilities of a platform that makes it easy to keep your data up to date. Thank you.